everybody. Welcome back to So Here's What Happened. The proud member of the Boy Though community. Um, hey guys, welcome to another episode. So here's what happened. I'm your host, Nisha, and I'm joined by two lovely ladies today. The first one being my co-host. Hey everyone, this is Carolyn. And the other one being my bestie. Hi, I'm Kate. <laughs> And today we're doing an episode solely dedicated to reviewing and discussing Black Panther colon Wakanda forever. Um, I feel like there's going to be a lot of feelings and thoughts. So we are going to do our best to stay on task with this discussion. But y'all already we should get let y'all know this right from the jump. There will be spoilers. You can pause this and come back to listen to it later. But there mm-hmm. will be spoilers. We're not going to hold anything back in this review. <laughs> yep. I have many yeah. thoughts and many feelings. Some good, yeah, yeah. some bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So we're going to kick things off with just giving the folks, actually, just in case people don't know, which by now people, y'all should know who Kate is. But Kate, if you want to let our listeners know, because I feel like that's how we should do this, even though you're my friend <laughs> <laughs> and we've talked to, I feel like you've a been on our show before. Pod. A friend uh, of the pod. Yeah. <laughs> So like Angela Bassett says, show them who you are. I like that. (laughs) Uh, I'm Kate Sanchez, editor-in-chief of But Why Though. Um, I think like the reason I'm probably most like relevant here is I am an indigenous Mexican woman. So that, that like this, like this, this is why I was like very happy to be called on and to like to, to be invited. But I cover film, TV, video, video games, manga, comics, just like all of it Mm -hmm. Um, to varying degrees of excitement, but I do cover all of it. Um, So that's me. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, With that, we're going to give you guys just a brief synopsis of the film. So Queen Ramonda, Shuri, Mbaku, and Okoye, and the Dormelage fight to protect their nation from intervening world powers in the wake of King T'Challa's death. As the Wakandans strive to embrace their next chapter, the heroes must band together with Nakia and Everett Ross to forge a new path for their beloved kingdom. Wait, why is Everett's name even there? I mean, he... Where is Namor? (laughs) Thank I you. Was this is straight from this is straight sure. from IMDb. I don't IMDb, know why. Right? I, I, you like that. We're, we're gonna get into this. This is ooh. one of my bad things. But we'll be we, we are we gonna do the positives or the negatives first? I feel like let's get into thoughts and feelings and let's do positives. Um sandwich it? Like maybe yeah, let's sandwich. sandwich. I like the sandwich idea. Let's yes. do that. So I, there are two reasons. One. Marvel is owned by Disney. Disney is a corporation. And I was very worried that we were going to hit the territory of exploiting somebody's very real death and tragedy Yeah, in a way for capitalist consumption. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that I don't trust Co- Ryan Coogler, but I know when Disney gets its fingers into things, it can be done a certain way. And I mm-hmm. was very worried that that would be a case. But on top of that, I was also very worried on how indigenous culture specifically indigenous mexican culture is going to be highlighted because one of my pet peeves is when we see mayans when we see aztecs when we see anybody from the old mac or toltec like regions um they're treated as mythological or something that's gone Mm -hmm. and not something that is like a very real living part of those communities today um that undergo real violence today and so I was very, I think I talked to Carolyn a little bit on the timeline about it. I was just like, I was a little just like, I don't know, man, like this is, this is going to be hard. But walking out of the theater, sitting in the theater, the first, the first time I was like, you know what? No, this is, it's not perfect, but it's good. It's mm-hmm. good. And I think that there was a love and reverence showed in both of the things I was worried about, both with how they handled Chadwick's passing. And I think mm-hmm. especially how they handled, um, Namor that I think that I, I walked away happy and or at the very least like those bars were cleared and mm-hmm. I think that that was like th- that's kind of like my feelings I have other feelings like I cried sometimes and I felt it felt very awesome to see like an indigenous brown skin Mexican man like being thirsted after by people like <laughs> the short king being thirsted after by people um <laughs> but those are my feelings that was a lot that was a ramble I will pass no those. no that was good I <laughs> felt like that was very, that was very good and concise ramble um me personally I did have similar concerns especially with Chadwick Boseman's passing um I just did not want to see GI face 
I did not want to see his face CGI like they did Princess Leia because I feel like it, it would have just been so easy for them to do that. But given that like with Ryan Coogler and his projects and like the connection he's made with his team, I just felt like, okay, Ryan Coogler wouldn't play us like this. So it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Um, other feelings, yes, cried. Did not expect to f- for this film, we'll get into it when we talk about symbolism and messages um, in the film, but like did not expect for this to be such a heavy message about grief. Um, but I liked it. Like it, it, it was very in, like insightful for me. So there's that. But like concern, my biggest concerns were just like, uh, like the last few MC, uh, MCU films have just not hit for me. Um, and Black Panther is one of the franchises that I'm like, y'all have not failed me yet. Please do not fail me now. And I'm really impressed with just everything. But I will say it's not that it's perfect because I feel like the story in some parts felt like it was dragging but we can get into that a little bit more. What about you, Carolyn? As I said, I have good thoughts and I have bad thoughts. So we are, we are starting to be good. So I love how this film explores grief. That grief is an unpredictable emotion. Grief isn't just about being sad. Grief is about being angry. It's about being frustrated. It's about being confused. It's about feeling lost, about mm-hmm. feeling betrayed and feeling um, hopeless. And, and like the film tackles all of that through different characters, but particularly through Shuri. Shuri is the one that we really get to see those aspects of grief. But surprisingly, we also got to see that through Namor. And Namor's grief is more with regards to how he grieves for the loss of his, of his people not being able to be on their, on, at home on land in, in, um, in Mexico or Maya. They, they lost their place literally physically on land and they had to mm-hmm. rebuild everything under the ocean so his his anger is grief you know and he had a millennia because he was from the 15th century right just before the spanish um invaded mexico and began to enslave the indigenous people there and wipe them out through smallpox but so like we get i love that brian and must give cre- credit to his co-writer too joel robert cole he also co-wrote black panther with um mm. with, with um ryan too so i have to give both of them credit for how they tackle grief and how they uh, give uh, different examples of what grief looks like and that yeah. grief doesn't go away just because you want it to grief grief doesn't go away within a year it doesn't go away within 50 years it doesn't go away within five six seven a hundred years grief stays with you it's how you're able to cope and how you're able to function with the grief. You have to compartmentalize the grief, but then there's some things that mm-hmm. brings the grief back. And I think the film starts out with, as we said, spoilers, um, Riri Williams, played by um, Dominic Cole, um, building this machine to detect vibranium. And Namor and his people, the telecans, were not happy, but they were existing underground they were monitoring they knew what was going on but she had to go and build something to go and detect my brain and he's like well this is now we, we've been our anger has been simmering for all of these hundreds and years now we're going to do because now our homeland is being threatened and his reaction to a lot of people i think a lot i saw a lot of people on twitter talking about oh he's like you know like the, the whole slash and burn like he wants to burn the world but i don't think a lot of people realize that his anger comes from grief he's afraid yeah, yeah. Mm. He's afraid of he's, he's afraid of losing forward. He's exactly forward. He's already lost everything, in the and past. he's anticipating loss mm. again. And but he's anticipating loss of everything that his people yeah. have built again. So like his and like people will compare it to Killmonger. He's nothing like Killmonger. Thank oh you. God, no, Thank no. You. He's Everybody keeps like Killmonger. saying he's that. what Killmonger thinks he is. Exactly. He's not. He if was doing anything, what he did as a survival technique, as as as, right. a, as a method of survival. Whereas Killmonger is being selfish as hell. If Thank anything, you. Killmonger wishes he had yeah the yeah. had well, the this, motivations that that well, he had because he did it is, exactly. Yeah. Well, and this is the other thing too is when you look at like I I have and not to jump right into it, but like I I'm very thankful that you said that because I keep seeing so many people compare them, and it's like no, Killmonger was selfish. He mm-hmm. killed people when he didn't need to, and he acted on his own accord. Exactly. Namor 
said, if you do X, I will do Y. Do y. He's a reactionary. He could have gone, he could have do Y. And then they decided to do X and find exactly. out what happened. Right. Exactly. The, the first people they kill are the, are the CIA agents. And the only reason they kill them is that they were a literal direct threat. Exactly. They were a physical threat. That was self-defense. And that was literal self-defense. And that's something that Wakandans would do. And I love how mm-hmm. all the CIA people are just like, well, they killed innocent people. They're innocent. Innocent. You know, but they're innocent, innocent to innocent white people, <laughs> innocent to other imperialists, but they weren't. And whenever it was like, I, I knew some good people on that ship, I'm like, I don't give a I damn who you, who you do. do. Everyone's like, talking about my bitch, nobody don't care about you. No, I'm, this isn't about you. you this man clearly does not know what's going on well, in his own and, government. So I think, I think it's like, this is like one of the like, what a really good thread that I really liked that Cooler and team did was there is... I don't want to say a mirror because they're not the same, but they're running parallel, right? Mm-hmm. So like Wakanda exists as a place that has never been colonized mm-hmm. and is now having to deal with opening up and wanting people to take their resources. Talokan is a place that is built from colonization. Exactly. Built the, from the remnants humanity, of colonization. You had to change their entire being yeah. in order to survive. Mm-hmm. And I think what you get is you get two pictures of somebody who lived in the open was de- like there was a genocide performed against literally them. and then they went inside and now something has been brought to their doorstep versus the the other side of what we saw in the first film which was hey we can't be isolationists we should be looking to help others mm-hmm. and i think the way that they ran these two tracks next to each other and showed the impact of both because they are both empires. How mm-hmm. do empires meet? What happens when one person makes a decision? I thought that that was really smart because it allowed us to look back on the first movie and see the themes that were said there, but mm-hmm. also see how they are different. Mm-hmm. I.e., he's not Killmonger. It's a very different situation. Yeah. Right. And the, the other difference between him and Killmonger, apart from the grief and the reasons for actions, is Killmonger is an imperialist in that he yes. went into Wakanda. He stalled his way into Wakanda. He didn't approach him diplomatically. He didn't yeah. go to he, him and say, I'm a son of it Wakanda. Was a coup. It was a coup. It was literally he, it a was literal a coup. coup. And I still look at all the elders, the Wakandan elders, I'm like, all of y'all would have been removed immediately. You see, immediately. I, and that is my one that? problem with Ramonda and Shuri at the beginning. I'm like, why are they still here? You should have had to vote it in new elders. I don't care. I agree. I I agree with that. But I think something that a lot of people haven't thought about with regards to the elders, and this is coming, me coming from a a country that's like Barbados, where where we we have our political system is set up very much to help Wakanda is set up in that where, where like the reason they were so ready to accept Killmonger is because they're accustomed to their kings, their rulers asserting dominance as leaders. Because that's how all of the Black Panthers became Black mm-hmm. Panthers. It wasn't just because they were born to the king. Remember, remember Black Panthers start, starts with Mbaku and T'Challa having a challenge. There's violence. Right. There, there There's is violence, violence in it. Showing it's a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So and that's, even, how, that's why they lead. That's why the elders were so easily swayed at setting him because to them, they're seeing that that's hundreds of years of conditioning. Hundreds of years, they're seeing their late leaders assert dominance that way. So to them, they're like, he's our leader like they, and even if they didn't want to and even like okoye even though she didn't want to she's like my my loyalty is to this throne to whoever sits in this throne well, and i think that there's a good a, there's a good movement here where and i don't think he got as much screen time as he should because i think mm-hmm. baku I, that's, one baku? that's one of my negatives that's one of my negatives really like, yeah. No, really? so I, I I liked that they showed his growth in that like at first it is very much the we should kill fish man he yes needs, he needs yeah. to die and then it's like, well, actually, no, because when you stop and think about it, if we killed someone's God, this is never ending. No, exactly. gonna keep I loved like, we and I to think about something other than violence right now. Because right. We will not survive this. And I honestly love that Mbaku becomes the voice of reasoning mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. in this film where it's like the person you from violence to thought. Yes, the person who was where people even describe him as like you're just so macho driven, you're just go, you you rather just jump into battle. But it's like he is the one who can actually get through above the no- break through the noise of like everybody else and I, actually I, be the voice of reason. Which I'm just like we needed, and I think it's just like he learned from his interactions with T'Challa. 
that mm-hmm. violence does not have to be the answer. Yeah. Yep. And I wish that that, that, that thread had been pulled more so yeah. that you could see, cause I think that like, there is something, um, to, to circle back a little bit to grief and to kind of pull mm-hmm. in, in name more and also Ramonda to a point, what I loved about Angela Bassett's performance and what I loved about the Notch's performance are very similar in that grief is as much a physical state of being as much mm-hmm. as it's emotional. Mm-hmm. Both of them, when they performed, like, I mean, Angela Bassett is unmatched when it comes to using every little lip quiver. You better be getting every, the thanks our Oscar like, nomination, I'm telling you. Ev- everything. Like, she was grieving with her whole body. Mm-hmm. And yes. you see very similar things happen with the notch as well. I think he, I think those two as anchors of grief, more more for me than Siri, but I, as a negative, I, I don't think that Letitia Wright necessarily met the acting bar of being surrounded by everybody else so like for these two they were my anchors for grief yeah but I think that it's also because I identify so much with Ramonda's grief where it Mm -hmm. is like you will be a leader and then Mm -hmm. when you are sitting in your plane on your way home by yourself and you've taken off your your headdress then you can feel your grief for a second yeah and then you have to come back into it Mm -hmm. and I think that like that is something that you see similarly with Namor in that his grief is carried internally and made external by having to be powerful and yeah. having to make sure that he is pushing people and protecting because he doesn't know how else to process it. And mm-hmm. and let's and and, don't, and a lot of people are forgetting he became a leader as a child, as a yeah. literal child. literal child god. And, <laughs> and he became and he wasn't prepped for that. He didn't grow up with he didn't grow up in a system like Shuri where she watched her parents be leaders. Yeah. He mm-hmm. became he a leader learn. as a god because he was born with wings on his feet. His yeah. people saw, oh my God, you got wings on your feet. You must be a, you must be a god henceforth. You are ipso facto our leader. And he's right. like I, I guess I am. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I guess so. And like and I mean just sorry just to go back to the grief part because like this is the so like we gotta go back to the grief because like the whole entire it's everywhere the whole it's it's everywhere everywhere. it's It's everywhere everything right but like for me the thing that i get out of it because i do agree kate like one of the negatives for me was letitia wright's performance it didn't hit and i felt like that in some parts where it was meant to hit is where it just like this is dragging Mm -hmm. this is dragging but i really felt seen with her struggles of grief and finding comfort in spirituality Mm -hmm. and because like carolyn said like the film really touches on there are so many ways this movie can teach us about what grief is and how people grieve and what it means to grieve for and it's different for everyone and it's not linear but when she and again y'all we said spoilers but like when shuri goes to the ancestral plane Mm -hmm. and she her reaction is her family abandons her and she doesn't see how her anger and how her skepticism and how all these other things have just kind of removed her from being able to access her family in that moment because she's still like she wanted the world to burn after T'Challa died because she felt like she failed him she felt like there was nothing else she could do and she just is looking for answers and reasoning and like for some for like personally I've had my own issues with spirituality and religion where it's like when I for not to get too emotional when my grandfather had Alzheimer's and people told me if you just pray he'll get better Mm -hmm. I hated I hated everything I hated, I hated everyone who told me that. And I just look and I'm just like, and I lost faith. And it's just like, I felt so empty and angry yeah. and I didn't, and I wanted answers. So it's like for people who have gone through a grief like that and not being able to maybe feel like they can tap in because Ramonda can tap in to like feeling the comfort of spirituality yes. and religion, yeah. but Shuri doesn't feel and think the same way or believe the and- same way. And I think like, I do want to kind of like plus one that in a way, like I, mm-hmm. I didn't like the solve because it was kind of like the solve you mean. So, so the solve of like, she, she, how do I say it? The traditions were always right. And so she should just go back to the traditions to find the peace. Personally, right. only oh, okay. because yeah. So like the, the solve of like tradition birth is science, like mm-hmm. that, like, like how she put through the grief, but, and this is a very, this is not a critique of the film because I think it does that well. Mm-hmm. It's just from like a personal place similar to Unisha. Like when my grandfather yeah. died, I, I am an atheist. I'm still an atheist. Mm-hmm. But there is something excruciatingly painful when you have to grieve by yourself. And I think it captures mm-hmm. it in the beginning of Shuri's journey, but nobody else is able to grieve with you because they just don't see the world the same way that you do. 
Right. And so for me, I didn't like the, the reconnecting back and then finally have like this, the spiritual having as much importance as it does, as it comes around. I understand narratively why it does and I right. think it works. So it's not a critique of that, but just like my personal disconnect, because I think that there is something really powerful in understanding how to get through grief when you are the only person around you, like when you don't have mm-hmm. that system. All right. I, I actually have an answer for that. And I, and it's actually within the film itself. Like for me, I also kind of related to that because like when we lost our, when we lost our, my grandmother, mm-hmm. um, she, we lost her at a very weird time because she died the day after my brother's wedding. Mm-hmm. Literally, My brother got married the Saturday. She died the Sunday morning. And that was a very weird time for us because we came from a day of celebration and uh, the very next was a day of severe mourning. But like I was talking to someone earlier this week about how the film goes through grief is that like we were saying grief is unpredictable and we process like as human beings, the way how we are able to compartmentalize and process grief is honestly, um, and this doesn't have to do whether you're uh, whether you are atheist or not. I just think it's just a, a miracle of humanity in the fact of how we are able to like process grief. Like, you know, yeah. someone has died, yeah. someone has died, but we are still able to function Wait, and say, okay, yeah. I need to drink a glass of water. I still have to get up and I still have to feed my child. I still have yeah. to get up and walk my dog. I still exactly. have to get up and call. I like legit my, when, um, when my grandmother died, my mom was in the living room in the front house and she couldn't handle anything. My sister was yeah. with her. And I'm the one who had to call the, the, the marchery That's house. That's how it was when my, gra- when my grandmother right? died. And I was, and I was in the bedroom with my grandmother's yeah my grandmother's body on her bed yeah. and I had I covered I, my mom had covered her sheet but she's there on the bed and I looked at her body and I I knew I'm like this woman is this person I'm seeing this body is no longer my my grandmother and it's such a surreal experience to look at a body that you've touched that you've bathed that you've cared for know the soul is no longer there that won't make that person who you knew is no longer there but still have to be saying okay this is the dress we're going to bury her in you know be on the I, phone with my friends and call my friends and say, Shani, Patrice, I need you to come and help me start starting out things because my mom and my sister can't do my brother's in solution on his honeymoon. He has to figure out how he's going to get home. So it's like the film kind of goes through that. And like, I agree with you, Kate, like the solve, I, I get what you're saying about how the film does the solve with regards to spirit chat. I don't think it has to, I don't, th- I think what Ryan did wasn't rely strictly on how they do the, believe in the ancestral plane spiritually be, because of narrative. I think he answers that because at the scene at the watering hole where um where Ramonda and Shuri are talking, she's talking about how she can feel T'Challa in the breeze. And we're assuming that it's because that that's and, she, and like as Shuri's saying, oh, is that you know how Shuri said that's a construct of your mind? Yeah. The ancestral plane is literally that. Yeah. It's literally a construct of their mm-hmm. mind. Because no one else in Wakanda visits the ancestral plane you can no, only that, access that, the ancestral that is a fair plane. point i didn't yeah. even think about it like that you can like, only that's... access the ancestral plane through the the heart shaped herb and only it the members of the royal altering, family yeah. can yeah. access a heart shaped herb basically a heart shaped herb is like a hallucinogen is like a hallucinogen, a hallucinogen. yeah mm-hmm. so what they see as the ancestral plane is is how is the the construct of their mind of how they and believe, how they're processing their right. how they process the grief and how they see yeah. their ancestors the the Black Panthers they see the farmer men as Black Panthers because that's how they grew up thinking of them. Shuri mm-hmm. she saw Killmonger because at that moment she was covered with her grief was anger it was just pure raw anger and who's the angriest person we've seen in Black Panther to date Killmonger yeah. so her grief so when she entered anger into the and revenge. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's in, like, like you said, because like when Killmonger even goes to the ancestral pain, he sees his father. Exactly. Like yeah. his father, he sees his father as his father, not as the Black Panther one, because his father wasn't a Black Panther, but like he just yeah. goes to his childhood home yeah. and he no, sees his right. father. And it's like, because he, he misses his dad. Exactly. He, he his has no connection to, house. right. And he has no connection yeah. to anyone else. So again, it has to, a lot with, to go with what you're doing, what with you're how you're feeling and how you think and how you're mm-hmm. projecting it. So, yeah. so, so I love that, Ryan. You, that if you sense, can look at yeah. ancestral plane from a religious or a spiritual place, or you can look at mm-hmm. it from a scientific perspective where this is how your mind constructs the, the, the place you see um, the people. Like for me, anyone asks me what's my favorite place in the ocean, it's the beach. Um, any pl- my favorite place in the world is the beach. Where do I feel the most relaxed? The beach. So if you ask me to, to when I have to get MRIs, I always go to the beach. That's where I go to in my mind. Because mm-hmm. that's where I'm able to calm down. So for sure, 
her ancestral plane wasn't the, the Serengeti where the, the Black Panthers were. Her ancestral plane was the throne room because that's how she always thought of T'Challa as a king. So she went there and she saw the manifestation of her anger, which is Killmonger. Yeah. She wanted someone to justify what she want, what she was thinking, which is to see the world burn. And that's mm-hmm. what Killmonger, he came in. Remember, he said, I want the world to burn because I want Wakanda to be in charge and everyone to fall on their knees. So she wanted, if, if it could have been anyone else, but that's who we as the audience knows yeah. the, that mm-hmm. representation of anger, imperialism, selfishness, mm-hmm. ego- egoism, narcissism. He's an embodiment of all of that. So when at the end, and we're kind of sk- hip, sk- skipping far, but it's still saying what we're talking about. When at the end, she yeah. sees her mother. It's not because she sees, it's not because she's finally believed in the ancestral plane. She's come to a point where she realized what her mother was saying. She's starting about, to actually process yeah. something else. Other about than processing than something other than, other than anger. Than anger. And revenge. When her mother yeah. is like, show him who you are. She's seeing her mother reminding her, you are more than your grief. You are more than your mm-hmm. anger. Yeah. I yeah. taught you to be, I taught you to be, to be kind. I taught you to be yeah. thoughtful. So that's where she was. That's why she saw her mother, not because because she wasn't in the ancestral. She wasn't. She didn't take the hardship herb. That's just no. how she saw her mom reminding no. her. And that's her construct. Anger. Like in, a, in her own way, she yeah. did the same thing that her mom did. She constructed yeah. the vision of her mother in a way that like yeah. she would encourage her in that moment. So whether people want to interpret it as like Shuri tapped into the plane or Amanda reached her, I think it's also just like to move like to move us forward just a little yeah, bit more. Yeah. Um, like to wrap up, I think that's the important message too at the end yeah. of Shuri learns to move past her grief mm-hmm. by finally sitting still and in remembering. Her, yeah. And like, I I tell you all the time, like my favorite African proverb, and I'm just like paraphrasing, is just that the dead are never truly dead Mm -hmm. unless we forget them. And I think that's a big part of this movie is that like Shuri wanted to move past the grief so much that it actually ended up doing her more damage. And like the way the film ends uh, at the credit, like before the credits is with her remembering T'Challa in all different aspects, the brother, the king, the person, her best friend. Like, I think that was really beautiful to show that, like, she's moving forward. And then we get to the mid-credits scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That one, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about that end credit scene. I love it. Yeah. For oh, I'll go first and just say, like, oh, I'll end up my, my sandwich on the positive. I loved it for many <laughs> different reasons. I have not cared much about this whole introducing the next generation. Mm-hmm. Like, for a while, I've kind of had mixed feelings with introducing the next generation of Avengers because... They just have not impressed me that much. And I think a lot of that's with Love and Thunder. I I just wasn't impressed with that rollout and everything. But I will say, I like the choice that they made. And like, again, y'all, this is big spoilers. If y'all haven't listened by now, I I assume you've watched (laughs) the film. When Nakia introduces Shuri to her her and T'Challa's son, T'Challa the second, it's like, in a way, I think that's a brilliant move from the filmmakers as a way to keep T'Challa the character's legacy and also respect Chadwick Boseman's performance as the Black Panther, as the child, as the first T'Challa, because now we actually do have a way to introduce a new actor to play T'Challa and be Black Panther down the line. It doesn't have to be, I feel like, I say it's very ignorant of people to have to say like, oh, this person could replace Chadwick and we don't have to have Shuri as the Black Panther. I feel like that was very insensitive, especially with how impactful his character was. I understand some people want to stick to the story. I just felt like when all that came out, I just feel like, y'all, just take a breath. We don't have to figure out who the next Black Panther needs to be um, tomorrow. So I think this is a nice way to respect his legacy and his performance. Cause that's how the director felt like the, how intrinsically tied Chadwick Boseman was to the character. And also now I would hope there's not going to be this whole thing where like, Oh, if they just got someone, I think at one point they were saying they wanted the black dude from Bridgerton to play T'Challa. Yeah, I remember that. There was somebody that was a- for everybody. There was somebody, <laughs> was- there was, there was a fan cast for everything. I mean, I, yeah. I, I feel a little split. So like one of the things I read, I think it was Chadwick's brother wanted them to recast. Mm. Um, Like very specifically parts of Chadwick's family wanted them to recast because they did not want the character to die right with him because the character was more than him and has always been more than just one actor in like mm-hmm. it's decades of legacy and like having a character that has been really important for a very long time. Because T'Challa is bigger than Chadwick at the end of the mm-hmm. day. But 
I agree that I think that this was a, it was like, I don't want to say compromise, but it was a way to, I feel like this film was also a processing of like their grief. And I think for me, cause I, I, I will very, I I've been very much recast T'Challa because I'm sorry, Disney is Disney and a movie is a movie, but like right. I have been in love with that character for more than half of my life. Like I like T'Challa has like been one of like the bright shining stars in a lot of Marvel like comics and series for me. And so the thought that like I'm going to get a Black Panther game for like the first time, but T'Challa is not going to be in it because right. they've also removed him from other media, like mm-hmm. not just the movie. And that's and so, like, the that weird was, part. It, well, and that's the thing. Like that was why I was very recast T'Challa because it's like I don't want to lose the legacy that this character has had and remove him from everything else Mm -hmm. but I think when I watched the movie it was really understanding that this was this was a very big manifestation of the cast's grief Mm -hmm. of Ryan's grief of their grief and getting the moment to like Instead of feeling exploitive of like, we're going to use somebody's death to market our movie, which is what I thought initially, Mm -hmm. it was very much no, like these are people who were a family on set and they lost someone important to them. And this was the way that they could process all of those complex things, because at the end of the day, none of us knew Chadwick. None of us knew him beyond who he was on the screen, but these people were with him for years, for days. They were living with him. They were seeing him. And I think when I was able to process that, like by the time that scene came up, I was like, no, this makes sense. Like, I finally feel like this makes sense. I still Mm -hmm. think we should get T'Challa in video games because it's very weird that we don't. That was was a weird decision that Disney made that just makes no sense. Like, it doesn't make sense for sense other media or like like there's cartoons there are other things like we don't need we to are, retire the ca- the character yeah. from, and, yeah, the media. Been detached the from the mcu and yeah. i think that i think that that's why a lot of people did kind of conflate the two because it mm-hmm. was like disney came out and was like well he's not going to be in anything now that was just I, I think, think that that's that, having no I, I think that's also just the execs again also having oh no, yeah them not what, actually knowing what to what Chalo, it yeah, yeah, no, that's no. what I mean. The execs, yeah. the Disney execs, they themselves didn't understand what not only to Chala, but Ryan meant to people, to our um, fans, because yeah. no fans were asking them to get rid of. No, no one was asking for them to retire people. Black Panther oh, like a yeah. jersey. That was, it was, that was, that, people were like, what? Oh, yeah. That's no sense. Like, you're erasing yeah. him from every, from from everywhere like we're like we're like we're just asking you guys to be like more cognizant of the grief and just yeah. be respectful of that. Like, people are like, what, yeah. why would you yeah. do that? Oh, oh yeah, so and I, I I definitely agree. I think it was the execs did something that conflated mm-hmm. a, a very strong love letter to the history of the Black Panther, to the history of Chadwick, and everything to like all of these other properties. Yeah, but on yeah, the point of having like a little T'Challa, I'm like, okay, you know what? If you're gonna like, it feels weird because I don't feel like we just need to like shoehorn a child into every movie. <laughs> like I'm just right. tired of the trope. But at least here I could see it. It was kind of like, hey. Like, we understand the importance of T'Challa as a character, and this Mm -hmm. won't be the T'Challa that you know, but we are at least going to make sure that his name doesn't die. We're going to make sure that... (laughs) I'm here watching the need to edit the Google Doc. Well, no, because we're talking about it already. I just don't want to... But yeah, Um, I just wanted to add that, because, like, I I think that, like, that was one of the things where, like, I, I think that there, there is like a long, like, I think that the conversation between recasting T'Challa and understanding the grief part of it, I think that it got weighed down in Twitter hyperbole as it always does. But I mm-hmm. actually think there's like a more fruitful conversation to have, like, what do you do about legacies? And how do you make sure that a character that has been around for so long gets to stay around, mm-hmm. even past one actor? And I think that like, talking about that, without thinking about necessarily like how Twitter reacts is probably and does their stupid hashtag campaigns <laughs> is probably one of the better things it just kind of like I think there is space for both and I think this movie was in conversation with both mm-hmm. and I think that mm-hmm. end credits really shows that I it showed that Ryan and the team were thinking about like the lasting impact of this and thinking beyond just one movie yeah mm-hmm. but yeah. Uh, so, like, I said, I mixed feelings about them introducing his son. I get that they, again, as you're saying, as we're saying, they needed to introduce a, a touch, a, a to, a to, to show that there is a future for the character. 
as well as the future for the franchise because Black Panther is quote unquote T'Challa. That's who Black Panther, literally, the Black Panther character is T'Challa. There has been no other Black Panther apart from T'Challa, except for when Shuri in the comics temporarily took up the mantle. Yeah, she because, steps in for I think 11 issues, I think. Is yeah, it? and then she was back out. So yeah. they needed so they needed to bring reintroduce another T'Challa because this is the MCU and like Marvel the um, the DC, what am I saying? Disney <laughs> is probably in planning like 10, 15 more of these movies because they they always count their chickens before they hatch. They need to stop oh, that. Yeah. But that's another discussion. <laughs> but I understood that. That makes sense to me. My problem is where is he's a child <laughs> that no one, nobody knows. Oh. Nobody knows the her we don't know how long how often she met this child as a black woman I have an issue with this because this is a stereotype that has been perpetuated about black people especially black men in hollywood that black men have kids out of wedlock and they leave the mothers to raise the kids alone because before t'challa died he was in wakanda and Oh. What's her face was and uh, what Nakia was in Haiti raising raising this child by herself. Yes, she had the money. Uh, she had his financial backing. Yes, he knew about the child. Yes, they made a decision to raise the child away from um, Wakanda, so he didn't grow up with the pressures of of the expectations of raising the child of of the of the of becoming a potential king. To me, that's a cop up by the writers. To me, that was I disagree. I I. I yeah, I understand because I thought about this because I had this conversation with my sister too. And I, I understand why they did that. And it makes sense. Yes, he's going to be like, I don't want my kid to grow up with the pressures. And, but I kind of saw that as a, as falling into the stereotype of, because I sure he didn't know. Ok- Okoye does not know. Only as far as we know, one person knew this child existed. And that was Ramon- Ramonda. And I got the feeling that's what she was going to reveal to Nikita, mm-hmm. um, to Shuri at the watering hole, where she's like, "Hey, there's something I need to tell you." I feel that's what she was gonna tell Shuri. Um, Shuri say, "Your brother isn't gone because he has a child here in this island in the Caribbean, being raised by Nakia." See, your fat, your brother is not really gone. But my whole thing is, is just falling into the stereotype of again. Oh, we got another fatherless black child. But see, there's dip fatherless black child. The stereotype to me, stereotype to me, is like the father was absent of his own choice. Like absent of his own choice, not because of death. That that's uh, different. He was gone for five years. He had only been dead he was, for one year at that point. But he of his not of his own choice. He was snapped away. That's not like the, him not being there is like separate from like a, some a fatherless child, like a father abandoning their child. It's true, but oh, I don't necessarily feel like it a lot. I wouldn't say it's it perpetuates the stereotype. I can see how some people might feel that way, but like it's different because T'Challa. It wasn't like he didn't choose to not be there. <laughs> And he made the decisions how to raise his child based off of the situation that they were in. Like he was, had to be king. He was sick. He didn't want his child to have the pressures of being an heir. He wanted him to be it's raised. Like sister know that and we don't know. Family. And we don't know if he was like, we don't know that if they weren't married. They weren't. Look, they how were. do we know? We didn't they see it. They didn't say it, but that doesn't mean they were or they weren't. So it's an unknown. Okay. I will concede on that point. Okay, the point I'm just saying, is, it's not, he's not Nick Cannon. T'Challa is not Nick Cannon. That's all I'm trying to say. Now that's, and, now that's... But, but I think someone pointed out, T'Challa in the comments was a fuck boy anyway. So like, he was. Like, he was. Like, he was. Both he was. him and Namor fuck. That, that, yes. they do it far and, and wide. I'm, and that is... I'm going to say is, <laughs> so so who are who are Namor? You want Namor? They, oh yeah, Namor steals. Oh, yeah. So, Spoiler, if you don't know comics, Namor actually steals Sue. Oh, Sue's yeah, so star. I thought you said someone else's name. I'm going to yeah, need Namor them. has been around. This I'm going to need Namor <laughs> to be, I'm uh, not Namor. I'm going to need Storm, not Storm. I'm already thinking about Reed? all of them. You mean Reed? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need Sue to have to be the baddest looking woman ever. She can't be white. She can't, she be, can't white. be white. That's what this Namor that Ryan Coogler has set up is not going to fall for no No, it's not that I don't want her to be I, white. I'm no, just no, saying no, like... No, 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 no. I, I, no, I think she has to be white because I don't think that he's fallen in love with, Stu, with Sue. I think he's going in there, ruining their house, and then peacing out. And that's it. Okay, Because cool. in the comics, he's not in love with Sue. He just takes her away because he can. 
No, I, I know. Like, I know. When you said still, I thought you meant still romantically because that's oh, what no, I was I mean, like. He stole her as in she left Reed and then he messed up her whole life. That's what he did. <laughs> White people should not. He, I applaud this. Home. Never mind. Never mind. I'm down I, with that. I don't see, I'm I down don't with see him having any relations, any kind of sexual or romantic or any kind of emotional re- um, relationship with any white woman because it's not what like how white people to say all y'all is colonizers and imperialists that's fair and, but he's and a and man at the end of the day <laughs> yeah but i see him ruining i need so. them to put him with a shantavia or a selena okay he needs but to, to get point, a imagine imagine you know you can ruin this man's and this woman's life <laughs> Forget it. And it's he just, it, it, it won't be romance. Okay. I, I'm, I'm on board. I'm on board. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Well, so this is, okay. well, so this I, is one of the things that I wanted to know too, is like when he talks to Namora, it's not clear what she is to him because well, he says right. my child, in but he comments, says my child to everybody. Everybody. And then in the, the comments, way, they're cousins. I want okay, they're cousins? Their, they're cousins. Okay. 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 Yeah, they're cousins in the comics. I was wondering if they kept that relationship in the film. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm curious about because there is a little bit. Because that's why they have the same name. It's specifically her words where she's like, I want, I, I, I saw myself fighting beside you for everything. Mm-hmm. That could be platonic, but it also could be romantic. And it, I was it like, could, what it are could have. It but could have happening. It could have been romantic, but then I was reading up and like they're cousins in the comics. So that's yeah. why they have the same name. But He's not to be Games of Thronesy. Thrones-y. Okay, cousins no. aren't Game of Thrones. This is because right. Because many okay, cultures still well, no, right. no, no, no. but many cultures, including like existing Latinos, mm. do marry their cousins. Oh, yeah, I know. And I mean royalty. And that ain't even a white person lines. thing. Like that, that is like. That yeah. happens. I think there's like <laughs> royalty marriages. bloodlines. I don't. Yeah, well, I don't like arranged marriages are a thing. No, yeah. they are, like, but it I happens don't... a lot between cousins. I I don't think that it would be here. I think that they would rewrite her to not be a cousin at all. Yeah, right. that's, that's what I was work. thinking. Yeah, I think he but, sees everybody as my child. That's why I was also that, thinking the, the same thing. thing. Like, I feel like he's so old that everybody is seen as it's a child. his child. But that, like a god, man. Man. that man is definitely getting something. I don't know oh. what he's getting, but he's getting he something. Like you don't look like that. Then waves god. is a moving. Look, <laughs> the waves are moving. This but, but I, I think so, like this brings me back. Or so like, the reason I did bring that up is because I think like my only issue with Namor and Talokan is really the lack of depth that you get to it. You mm-hmm. see it and it's really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Why are why do I have no more conversations? Why do I not have him processing stuff with his people? Yes. What like that is what I wanted because it very much um I, and I think that there's like this big issue here. Like a lot of people, I've been asked so many times, what do you think about them making the indigenous people the bad guys? I was like, I didn't think they were the bad, not bad guys. guys. They're not we bad. Were not. <laughs> the bad guys is colonization. The bad guys that are the, the bad That's guys. the message the I The bad got. guys is the United States. That's exactly. the bad guy. That was clearly like, established. I don't know how any yeah. could. Well, and I think that this is, well, I think that this is like the larger issue that I have with Marvel movies that try to do complex problems yeah. is that I think it flattens it to a point where it tries, like, I think Ryan Coogler does within the confines of Disney mm-hmm. very well. <laughs> He did a very good job of establishing these are the reasons he is like this. There's his conversation he has with Shuri where he says they enslave people like us. Like he, his, he says what he is doing and he says why he is doing it. Mm-hmm. But I think that after the devastation that happens in Wakanda, I think that if you're not trying to immediately fault him for it, you can see that it is about the structures that are pushing two people to fight instead mm-hmm. of just two people fighting. Yeah. And I think that that gets lost on some folks, especially like because there is such a connection to either side of these characters or any of these characters. But I think that like, if it wasn't a Disney film, I feel like it could have been expanded on more. Oh, it could have gone deeper. If we had just gotten more conversations. And you can of see that Ryan. Ryan you can see mm-hmm. that Ryan wanted to go deeper. Yes. Because yes. those yes. scenes, take those scenes with Ross and DeFontaine out. That time mm-hmm. yeah. could have been used with Talokan and having Namor. Inter- we didn't really get to see him interacting with his people that much. Mm-hmm. And that's one of right. my faults with the film. We saw Talokan, but we didn't really get to see Talokan. We didn't. Get you didn't to understand Talokan as a place with people who live there. We just yeah. saw them swimming around, as... but like 
I yeah. want to whoa, whoa. Because I, I'm even not even in the very not clearly because it needed better light, lighting because I'm like okay this man made a whole a, a whole sun under the water for these people yeah. I'm like where are the street lamps? I want to know where that lamps? I'm like why are there not more lamps why are there not yeah. some mini suns hanging around so I could see more of this of this place yeah. I'm like why is it so dark and, and when I oh. say like a living breathing thing I mean like the everyday stuff so like when you look yeah. at Wakanda you see the people just living their mm-hmm. lives and just doing everything and it's so quick that we only see Talokan and its violence we don't see yeah. the different pieces that make it a dynamic civilization yeah we only get to see it through shuri's eyes yeah and i think that that makes it really hard for people to make to understand that while he is an antagonist he is not a villain yeah because they don't see the humanization they just see the end result yeah and to Um, add on to that i would just say like and i agree because like i wanted i felt like what was missing from namor and his people like him as a ruler because like him and shuri being like mirrors to one another when it comes to like having to be in a seat of power or like be a protector to your people. Namor like doesn't have a council. He doesn't Mm -hmm. have an M'Baku. He doesn't have somebody. He carries the burden. He carries the burden for all of it. He's making all these decisions and his people are following him, but like it's, he's doing it with the good, the good will and good intentions for his people to survive. But it's like, like you said, I think it would have been dope if he, we saw him have a conversation with Namora and I him talk that. about like because how he's she feeling. very clearly like he respects her enough for her to step up and be like I don't know I don't like what you're doing why did you let that little girl beat you like I feel like that push and pull would have been better mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but I do like to talk about him real quick like just as a character yeah you know, like as we move forward and like mm-hmm. start talking about different uh different folks as characters w- what I really loved and I think it really captured is what he says to Shuri he says the most broken people make the best leaders that hit me in a way mm-hmm. because like that is how I was raised like you don't complain mm-hmm. you get broken down by the world and you just get back up and you're gonna use it to make you better or you're gonna you're gonna buckle under it and that's that's how I was raised that's how I was taught and there is and I think that like all of our cultures kind of share this where it's like you have to be resilient under trauma so if you don't yeah. think about that as fa- as there's no way that you can keep going in the world mm-hmm. and i think what i really appreciated about how they framed namor i think like like one he was gorgeous i love how they shot him very gorgeous yes. two he was ferocious in a very in a very in, in an intimidating way and an aggressive way where you knew that he was going to act on what he was saying, but not in a haphazard way that like Killmonger was. Yeah. And I think ultimately he is a man who has not processed any of that grief, really. He and hasn't he just had time to. Yeah, he hasn't because he's been like, he had to burn a plantation as a child. I <laughs> mean, he didn't, he didn't get to grieve the loss of his mom and the land. He had to free his people. And I think that like, that's what I like about him in that he feels it very deeply like they did not re- remove the emotion from him mm-hmm. but he's but not is aware that even, he's grieving he's not aware of it and neither is the audience yeah. and i think exactly because I, I, I was th- when i because i watched the film twice so like the second time was last thursday night and, I, and i've been thinking about this the entire time like hogar is saying like he hasn't had time to grieve and people say okay he's been ruling since like the 15th century uh, and in that entire time if you really think about it They've literally been rebuilding um Talakan under underwater. He's that also is a like, god. When just, can a god cry? Not, but, he, but the thing is, he's not an actual god. He doesn't have superpowers. Oh, no. Yes. Oh no, no. No, I mean when I say superpowers, I mean yeah. like he he's not like Thor where he could call down thunder, yeah, yeah, yeah. carve a stone or anything. Yeah. He still has to use like human His methods of building and, yeah. everything. They have to rebuild an entire well, Wakanda is on on Earth. It was it's easy it's easier to build an empire on earth than it is on the water. They have to yeah. first thing first figure out their challenges as human beings who've turned into mer people. And then they have to figure out, yeah. okay, wh- which part of the ocean are we gonna live so we can't be de- detected? So they gotta go and traverse the entire globe to find out which is the safest place. Thank God it's close to their home. But then they have to figure out how do we build a, a house underwater? How do we build a temple? How do we build, how do we mine for vibranium underwater? 
and they're using primitive tools. They don't have the they, and then eventually they 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 grew to have technology the same way that Wakanda has. But that took oh, we might have to do a second part. <laughs> that, <laughs> oh, no. like, that would have taken hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. All of that while keeping keeping secret underwater. <laughs> While a while it while exploration on the on the water has been expanding yeah. through science through science. I think the other thing that so to go into what you're saying too, there he they are too intelligent of what is happening in the world to not know what's happening up top. And he's the only one that is not blue. So not only he's does only he have to help do- build everybody, he's also I'm the one that has to go to the surface and <laughs> see how everybody how his people are being treated. He's got a surveil. Yeah. happening. Like he's got a surveil and going and be up to tread on what the US government and all of these governments are up. And he can't do anything. He ha- he has to see everything happening. And very specifically, like one of the reasons why it was very important for me not to act like the Maya are a erased people mm-hmm. is because this happens in the, they're Yucatec Maya, they're in the Yucatan in Mexico, mm-hmm. but in Guatemala. The Maya have faced multiple genocides mm-hmm, mm-hmm. under the state, under state violence. Like, and that is not something that is ancient. That is something that was That's 20 hard. years ago. That was something like that is. And and for me, I think it, it it adds to what, like to what you're saying, Carolyn, is like, he has to build, he has to be a builder. He has to be a king. He has to be a God. And can a God cry? No, he no. has to hold it together even more. And mm-hmm. then he has to go on land and see all of the injustices, knowing that he has the power to burn it down and choose not to because he has to protect the people underground. And I think that like when you when you pull all of that together, you get a very angry man, but you also get a very emotional man who is just trying to go about and he does is he does there a little hubris in there? There is a little hubris in there. Yeah. We know that. But he is trying to go at the path that he sees is right but not just for him. Like every, he's also, mm-hmm. he's, and he's also very else. reasonable. Exactly. Yeah, he's, he's also very reasonable, reasonable. because he and, goes to Ramonda and he gives her a tool. He says, blow into this conch shell and summon for me when you are ready. He didn't tell her, he didn't give her a deadline, you know. He said, when you yeah. are ready, contact me and I will come to you. And he I will have man and say, I will set this shit on fire right now and I will mm-hmm. find, and I will, but he said, no, I will give you, and even when, even when, we, we got to definitely do a second part because when he even bury your dad. after Ramonda dies, he said, bury your dead, grieve and mourn your loss, mourn your queen. And then we going to fight. We going to tussle. But even in that, he's still benevolent. And he says, I understand your grief and it will give you time to process this. Mm-hmm. Then we going to go to war. But even before we go to war, I will say on there could have killed Shuri. He did it. He, he said, did it. Queen now. I I will say the one thing that the character that I did not expect to irritate me the most in this film, and it's very small, Nakia. Because all you had to do was listen to Shuri. All you had to do was listen to Shuri. When she She, killed that woman, it was like, give her the frigging Kamoya beads right now. It doesn't take too long. It It doesn't take long. Two women. Even if it did, put it on there. Namor comes back. He sees the Kamoya beads and he's like, He's not dumb. He'd be like, oh, they tried to save her. Maybe I don't burn Wakanda or blood maybe Wakanda. I have a maybe, maybe we need to have I a discussion. Can talk to them now. Right. Nakia, I'm like, Shuri was so close to getting a compromise, to getting some resolution for both their people. Shuri is a great diplomat. But Nakia came in and she was under orders for Ramonda. This is a situation where Ramonda's own like hubris got in the way, and Nakia's but just but even, Nakia's yeah, goal. Just even when Ramonda her. told her do anything by means necessary, Ramonda as a leader would not have wanted Nakia to leave that woman wounded and by herself. She would have told Nakia fix her before know. we leave. I, I think don't think so. I don't I, think so because at this point so she I sees think her daughter just is getting her at this point. I yeah. think I think that I think that Ramonda's grief in that moment, yes. she would have killed everybody. To she would have killed everyone back. to get her because child. She didn't back. Want but, to but I mean, once she saw that Shuri was safe, once she saw oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was oh, like, if, if she was actually have been down like, there and saw her safe, she, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. If Ramonda had been there, she would have wanted Shuri to save that girl too. So when I was like, you, the first time I said was like, this girl, I'm like, this is why this war starts, not because also. Also, the thing that gets me, 
the thing that gets me, and it is with every hostage situation, like that is always structured like this, gets taken, treated well, somebody comes in, kills them. Did you not stop to ask, hey, how'd you get these new clothes? Are they treating you fine? There's a like, bowl of fresh is, fruit right It would have been better. Over, which means Namor had to go to the surface and go and find her some papaya. Also, you already know that this man wants to kill this little girl to protect his, his, and his did people. Right and he fine. did it. The very existence it. of Riri Williams in that moment means that he can be reasoned with. Because sure. to kill the random helper. <laughs> yeah. They're swinging in a hammock. <laughs> He's eating he papaya. Chill. I mean, if anything, he probably would have agreed to keeping Shuri imprisoned or like he would have agreed to the Wakandans keeping, I'm not Shuri, uh, well, he would have agreed to that too, or keeping Riri. Riri. Yeah, yeah. If the Wakandans recruited Riri and they said like, we will, we, if she had just well, said what even, she said at the end. And I think that this is something that I don't think people give him enough credit, and the writing of him enough credit for, is throughout the entire captivity piece, he never dehumaned Shuri. Never. never. Not even not even Riri. He didn't even. Exactly. Like, yeah. He, be, he meets he them was where hospitable. they are. He Mm -hmm. talks to them where they are and he gives them a window into his life and he gives them a window into Talokan and he tries. It is his moment. He's steadfast in like, I can't let this girl go, but he is still trying to say like, instead of saying, just listen to me, Shuri, you're a kid. He said, let me show you what I am protecting so that you can understand why this needs to be protected. Yeah. And I think that like, I cannot wait to see more of Namor. I want there to be yes. a solo movie because the notch deserves it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I Oh wait, real quick, since you're already on the roll and I don't want to stop it too much, let's just go into the wrap up then. Like, okay. Take a float. I'd, what down, do you I'd think also be next? down for coming down to do it for a part two if that we need to do okay. a part two. Because okay. okay. honestly, we probably should do a part two because okay. <laughs> there's so much more to talk about. All right, that's what we can do. I think what we can do, we can do a part two, a continue because we haven't even talked about um Ramonda or Okoye or Mbaku and their improvements yeah. and writing for them. And there's so much yeah. about their characters, like Okoye's Okoye. story, so which special a lot in this film in very unexpected ways. So part two, we yeah. gotta part two we can do as a character as um as a character excavation and going into the negatives because we haven't really talked very much about the yeah. negatives and a lot of my yeah. negatives have to do with what we're talking about with the story and the narrative structure and how you can tell where the disney exec stepped in and say where you need to this is what that you're talking about the whole hostage thing that felt very much like a hollywood yep. trope and it yep. is not and when i was watching it both times i said this does not feel like anything brain coogler would write yeah, yeah. I, the only thing I thought, so the thing is like the only thing that i thought that he would write is the very like thoughtful dialogue back yes. and forth yes. between shuri and and namor that the, the trope yeah we've seen that like oh that so nice. many times it was like we can't just have them sit at a table and talk about their problems we have to make something traumatic happen for you them need the navy seal i.e i.e nakia to come in and do a stealth operation oh yeah. stealth yeah still but i will i will say like just to wrap up like there is so much that like that i see that is extremely meaningful in the rep in the indigenous representation because i will say it right now if you are out there and you say latino don't you should not be talking about this because this is not latino representation the very essence of them is that they have not been touched by spanish colonizers (laughs) Therefore, so like, dude, if if you say if you say Hispanic, if you call the noche Hispanic, if you call them Hispanic, I am sure that a whole world of people will punch you right in your face. It's just not right. It's not even it's, what they are. It's and, not factual. And it, it, it's extremely important. And this is why I was very worried about the blue people part of it is that Mexicans in Mexico and Latin America, nobody gets to see themselves with indigenous features. Nobody gets to see themselves in all their brown beauty. <laughs> they yeah. don't, as as the Nocha said in interviews, it looks like Scandinavia on Mexican television. <laughs> You're telling no and, <laughs> and and that and that me and he has been very vocal about the racism and colorism in Mexico and in Latin America for so long. Mm. So to see, so I was worried about the blueness of it because I wanted to see these beautiful indigenous actors that they had casted. Because my my grandma hated my nose. My grandma didn't like that my cheekbones sit higher than the rest of my family. Like, I, my grandma was native. <laughs> like, 
and my grandpa was native as well. And so like, these are parts of myself that I have been told aren't attractive and don't like, d- don't hit those typical standards. And so to see it in such yeah. beauty and honored and especially made to seem like thirsty worthy, like yeah. that meant a lot in a way that I didn't think I was going to get out of it. Like, like see, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, no, it makes sense. Cause the decision could have been so easy to keep them blue the entire time, but yeah. the scenes when you see them in their home mm-hmm. underwater They're and not. they are very clearly yeah. brown. Oh, I feel like we so gorgeous, right? It's just like, I, I agree. Cause like we have, when people want to say like, Oh, you, well, you guys have, what's her name in guardians. Um, uh, Gamora? Mantis? Oh, Gamora. 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 I mean, both of them are aliens. Mantis. Yeah. Both, both of them follow the trope of putting a woman in color, a woman of color into color. like green or blue or translucent skin. And oh, but y'all want to yeah. say we have representation, but like, no, Kate, to your point, like you want to see yourself. You want to see someone who looks like you on the screen, mm-hmm. not someone who is you and, and see paint. It revered, to see <laughs> mm-hmm. it like treated as something that is gorgeous and beautiful and worth preserving and yeah. worth protecting like that is it, it was just well done and I I yes. was very I I I do not trust anybody who is not indigenous to tell an indigenous story I don't think just because you are diverse yourself means that you understand the impacts that a choice can have on the community that you're representing yeah but I'm really happy with what I got. And it, it showed like, it's kind of like, I'm not saying that he would have done a bad job, but like, I'm coming in with my guards up. Yeah. No, and but I, I mean, anybody was, should feel a little apprehensive. Yeah. I wouldn't but want every bit, every, every bead, every color choice, everything. What there was a care and a love put into it. Um, yeah. And I think that that was something that like, I, I don't know, man, like, Mesoamerican mythology is really, really cool. Um, and our art and our our histories are beautiful, like tapestries that we don't get to see. And so mm-hmm. it was awesome to see it on such a big scale. Yeah. I would really love to see Namor explored more, like him and his people. Like it doesn't have to be in um him as a supporting character in the next Black Panther film. I would actually I I would really love to see a solo Namor film. Mm-hmm. And so like they don't do a feature, a short film. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just, I would, I want to see more because you're right, Kate. Like, I mean, this is a great jumping point for that for that franchise to take off. Also, who there are very few people that can hold their own up against Angela Bassett. Like, there are very okay. few people. That's who okay. not getting you by that. that. Let's save that for part two because that's a, that's <laughs> it. My, that's it. My Ramonda discourse. Like, that's it. That we're gonna do part two. So before we wrap up, like, Kate, what you're saying about the blue. That's something else I don't think a lot of people have even really noticed or picked up on about the film where is like the reason they're blue out of the water is because that's legit their skin react that's the mm-hmm. their skin reacting to the air molecules. So they're blue and which is which makes sense because there's a lot of amphibious and marine animals that yes. when they're out of the water their skin reacts to yes. oxygen differently right. than when they're in the water. So when they're in the water the water has not become their natural habitat. That's yeah. what they, they, you can see who they are as yeah. people, as who they are as indigenous um, Mayan people. You see their, their brown, their brown skin and their, their, you see their facial features better because they're not wearing like the, um, the mask yeah. on their face. And I love that Ryan did that where he's like, this is their natural habitat. This is their home. So this is how yeah. we see them in their traditional wear. Yeah. And this is how we see them see their, um, see their skin in all of its melanated glory. But I don't even think a lot of people even picked up on the nuances of that because I'm like, you, like in the scene where he's like, where where he's like telling him, right, Talakan, you're seeing all of these people oh, in yeah. all of these different shades mm-hmm. around. And that's where you're seeing all these people around Talakan. And like, this is, a well, I'm going to end now, but there's another, like Nisha, you were saying, the other thing with Namor is that he doesn't have a council. And the yeah. film kind of shows that he does, but they don't show them working as a council. And that's with Atuma. Yeah. And the Mora, because oh, yeah. he acknowledges this them first. They're his right mm-hmm. and second hand. And I'm like, that's his council. Why don't we see him talking with his council? Like yeah. you're saying, that Nisha, I have the same. I'm like, I took him as generals. I was like, I right. I, I, I took him as generals what's too. What's happening? But I, yeah, I agree. Like you see them as positions. Like they're separated from like everybody the, else. It's yeah. Namor and then everyone yeah, else down. Yeah. 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 So, which, so, so, we'll, so, yeah. so we'll get into a second. We'll wrap up now, everyone. So this is yeah. our part one. Yeah. 
<laughs> of our recap of Black Panther Wakanda forever. Thank you so much, Kate, for joining yes. us. Of course, we will be back with part two. I'm going to publish this part one <laughs> before we publish part two. But as everyone, as I mean, you know what? It kind of makes sense that we're doing a part two because this film is almost three hours long anyway. It's very dense and it's very long. Whoever told me it was two hours and 15 minutes yeah, running like, time on Google. You. Google was a they lie. Prepare you. They did not. Because <laughs> I'm just like sitting there like, yo, is this movie dragging or I don't no, know. It's long. It's, it's long. long. It's just long. But huh, yes, part two will be coming um, before we have long. <laughs> very bright. Um, but before we head out, Kate, if you can let the people know where they can follow you, if they want to get more of Kate. Yeah, you can follow me at Oh My Mithrandir on Twitter and Instagram. Um, my feed is pretty much all the notch right now. <laughs> like that's I'm just stop telling people where to that go ain't watch a problem. Those other movies. That ain't no problem. And and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, that's where you can find me. And uh, all my writing is at butwido.net. Nice. Um, of course, y'all know where y'all can find me. That's at Nisha Plays on Instagram and Twitter. Also, my writing is on bookwhythough.net. Um, I have some cosplays coming up. One where I might be trying to do a Black Panther cosplay soon. Mm-hmm. So I know I'm like behind when the movie comes out, but <laughs> it might be it may, if, it, if I get it to work, it'll be worth it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And for me, everyone, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter while it's still up. <laughs> at <laughs> oh that's a ooh, that man's setting this whole platform on fire but you can mm-hmm. find me at carrie senate show that's at c-r-i-e senate one two my youtube i now have a personal handle for my youtube channels so is youtube um forest slash the at symbol carolyn underscore heinz so that's where you can find Yay. my videos for um carolyn talks my interviews with film creatives and my one of my most recent ones with the um south korean actor e jung jay for his film hunt which screened at the 2022 Toronto International Film Festivals. I have in, um, interviews with the African American Film Critics Association. You can also go on my R3 page, which is r3.com slash Carolyn Hines and find all of my most recent published work um, there, which including links to butwido.net for my work published there as well, which one of a, um, an interview that I did with um, Taiwanese director. I am drawing a blank on his name, but for his film, Goddamn Asura, which is um, their selection for the 2023 Oscars Film Festival. And um, you can end this podcast episode. will be on butwhythepodcast.net as well as on ACAS and other podcast streaming platforms. Follow us on Twitter and get up and keep in touch with us while we're yes. still there. Yeah, and to prepare can- us real quick. I will say like, if y'all want to, if y'all have questions or thoughts that y'all want us to discuss in part two of this mm-hmm. review, go ahead and tweet at us and we can make sure we bring those into the discussion. Yep, use a hashtag. Um, so here's what happened. R-S-H-W-H. Black Panther or what kind of forever. Um, until the next episode soon. <laughs> um, so here's what happened, everyone. Have a good day. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.